In this video, we will continue exploring the MVC concept further by looking at a second example of designing code for another app. In the last video, we learned about what MVC really is, what role each of the components has, the mono, the view, and the controller, and how these components communicate with each other. We also discussed the benefits of using MVC in software design, and to get a better understanding of the concept, we looked at a good example in which we took an MVC approach in designing the code for a simple app, a match-match game. If you haven't seen that video already, or if you are not familiar, at least theoretically, with the concept of MVC, I strongly recommend watching that video first and then coming back to this one. It is very important to really take some time to understand the concept, because doing so will save so much more time developing apps later in your career. In this video, however, we will improve our understanding of the MVC concept by going over a second good example of designing code for an app, this time a calculator app, similar to the one shipped by Apple with every iPhone device. Ready to get started? Before getting into our calculator code example, it wouldn't be a bad idea to take a couple of minutes and review what MVC is all about. After all, repetition is the mother of learning, the father of action, which makes it the architect of accomplishment. So MVC is a software design pattern that divides the code of a project into three different groups, the model, the view, and the controller. The model encapsulates both the data and the business logic, which defines the rules of the app. The model is the what of the app, what the app is all about. The view is a collection of generic subviews representing the user interface, meaning what the user sees on the screen and what the user is directly interacting with. The view is the how of the app, how the app looks and feels. There should never be any direct communication between the model and the view. The model is completely independent of user interface and will have no idea how the data will be represented on the screen. The view, on the other hand, will not store or manipulate any sort of data. The information shown on the screen is only a visual, formatted representation of the data. The controller is the middleman that acts as a mediator between the model and the view. It is the controller that communicates with both the model and the view and translates messages between them as necessary. That's pretty much all about the MVC concept in a nutshell. It's a pretty short summary. Now, let's think about how we could separate the roles and responsibilities in this manner for a calculator app. We will start by designing the model first. Let's call it calculator. The name calculator kind of makes sense. To initialize this model object, we can ask for an initial value. Now, last time we had a failable initializer, that init call with a question mark, since if the game didn't get an initial set of data that is non-empty to work with at initialization, the game couldn't exist. So there was a possibility the initializer could fail. But this time it's different. We can choose to provide a way to initialize a calculator with an initial value, but there's no reason to make it a requirement. An initial value is not really required for a calculator to exist, because we can start with an initial value of zero by default. An initializer like this will be just for convenience, which makes it a convenience initializer. Whoever is going to use our calculator model object might choose to use this convenience initializer, but they might also choose to use the simple one, the one without any argument, which is the required one. All right. Once we have an initialized calculator object, we can start thinking about the functions that it will do. One that comes to mind is to take in an operand, such as a 1 or a 2 or any other digit. It will digest this operand and, based on the current state of the calculator, it will return a new state. Let's call it a calculator state, which will be a custom data structure we will also have to design ourselves. We won't go into details about this structure in this video, since we are just trying to get a bird's eye view of how the MVC architecture works. A second function needed will be a function that will take in an operator, 
such as an addition operator or subtraction or any kind of operator we decide to implement. This function will also return a new calculator state after each call. And that's pretty much it for the model. With the model designed, we need to start thinking about what will the controller need to have. Somewhat similar to our last example, the controller will definitely need a bunch of buttons on the screen, which we will represent by an array of generic user interface buttons. Then, we will need to display the current calculator value using a simple label. And finally, the controller will need to create and own a calculator model object, which is what we have previously designed. Plenty of similarities with our previous example in the last video. One last thing needed for our controller will be a target action registration, basically a function that will be called every time the user taps on one of those buttons. And voila, we are done with our entire code design. That's it. Let's go through a few use cases in slow motion to see how it will work in practice and decide if we need to revise this code design in any way. Let's say the user taps on button 6, so the view is sending a user tapped on button message to the controller. The controller determines the button is an operand button and asks the model to apply operand 6. The model then takes the operand and returns a new calculator state back to the controller, which in turn tells the view to reflect the new calculator state on the screen. This will mean that the value displayed will be updated to 826. If the user now taps on the plus button, the view will inform the controller about this tap gesture first. The controller will look at the button that was tapped, and as a result will send an apply operator addition message to the model. The model, in turn, will generate a new calculator state and will return that state back to the controller, which in turn will direct the view to reflect the new state on the screen. As a result, the display label will remain 826, but the plus button will change its background color to indicate the calculator is now in a binary operation mode, waiting for a second operand. If now the user taps on the button 1, the entire cycle from the view to the controller, then to the model, and finally back to the controller will take place as before. The message received by the model will be, of course, apply operand 1. The new state received will result in the view displaying the number 1, but the previous number, 826, will still be stored in the model somewhere, since the calculator is still waiting for a second operand for a binary operation. This will be a case where the screen is not reflecting the state of the model completely, which happens often in apps and is perfectly fine. Remember, the view is not aware of the state of the model and it is not in charge with storing any kind of data hidden from the user or not. A special consideration is to be given to bigger numbers, such as this one, 5407. That's because the model will be in charge with storing communicating real numbers without any consideration regarding formatting. Formatting, which is a process in which raw data is converted into a visual representation for the user, is the job of the controller. When the model sends this number to the controller, the controller will have to format the number and display it with a group separator for the user. This separator is a comma in the United States, but not everywhere in the world. In some regions, this separator can be a period. It is the job of the controller to figure out, somehow, which is the appropriate way to format numbers like this. The number is the same number, just the visual representation is different based on the location of the user or maybe based on some settings the user can set somewhere else in the app. The model is never concerned about this formatting and deals only with raw data. Now, formatting is a very complex problem because of how much diversity exists in the world when it comes to representing numbers in writing. There is no one-size-fits-all when it comes to formatting. The comma or the period are not the only possibilities. There are regions in the world that use a space as a separator, others that use an apostrophe, or even a superscript period, believe it or not. And more than that, some regions are not even grouping numbers in groups of three digits, but in groups of four or two, or some other kind of combination of these rules. The same is true when it comes to the decimal point. Most of the world uses a period to represent a decimal point. 
for example the number 43.6, is displayed like this in the US, but in other parts of the world the same number will be displayed like this. A well-designed app and user-friendly software application would consider this formatting problem, but the point is, this problem is never the concern of the model. The controller is the one taking data from the model and formatting it appropriately for the user. So here we are, we got our view, which is made of a bunch of buttons and a label, we got our model, made of a calculator object with a convenience initializers and two functions, and we have our controller, which exchanges information between the model and the view. Each component has its own separate, distinct role in the overall system. I hope you did find value in this video, and if you did, subscribe and turn on the notifications bell so you can stay informed about future videos.